action, and danger. Hundreds of dramatic behind-the-scenes adventures are all part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here is the story of The Flying Politos. Clyde, what is it, dear? What's troubling you? Mm. Are my worries showing again, honey? They always do to me. That's what you get for marrying the owner of a circus. There's always something to worry about. I'm not complaining. I know. You never complain. Honey, why didn't you marry a plumber or a doctor or somebody like that? What? And be awakened at all hours of the night to fix a, a broken water pipe or a broken collarbone? <laughs> I guess there's always something wrong with the other guy's job at that. Certainly. Now, take the case of a night watchman. Well, what would I do if you had a job like that? Well, I guess you'd have to do your housework at night. Hmm? With no soap operas to listen to on the radio? Oh, be silly. <laughs> I never thought of that. Now, suppose you tell me what's on your mind. Uh, well, it's the flying Politos. Oh, I was wondering how long it would be before they became a problem. Then you've noticed it, too, huh? All I can say is I'm frightened to death every time they go on with their act. Yeah, it's time they quit. Yes, Clyde. They're getting too old for such a dangerous act. And I've got to tell them. Oh, Harriet, how can I tell a couple of real troopers they're too old for the Clyde Beatty circus? I know how badly it makes you feel, dear, but there's nothing else you can do. I know. I've got to get them off that high trapeze before... Well, before there's an accident. Poor things. I wonder if they've saved any money. Probably not. Show people seldom do. They've been working the act for so long. They don't have to worry about some sort of job. As long as I've got a circus, there'll always be a job somewhere in it for the Flying Palitos. You're a sweet man, Clyde. I don't feel sweet. Well, how do you feel? Oh, I... I feel like Scrooge or Simon Legree. Or... Mm, don't you think you're being overly harsh with yourself? It doesn't matter. I've still got to tell the high-flying Politos that they're grounded. And now, back to Clyde Beatty's adventure entitled, The Flying Politos. Just a minute, Clyde. Are you trying to tell Rita and me we're through? Look, Gino, you're not through, not with a circus, that is. Then what's all this talk about washing out our act? Well, it's just a... Well, it's just... Gino, Rita, what Clyde is trying to say is... Well, he thinks you've been doing your flying trapeze act long enough. You're entitled to a rest, and you should start taking it easy. In other words, you wanted the flying police to retire. And live on our income, I suppose. Now, you know you'll always have a job with us. Well, of course. Why, the Clyde Beatty Circus could never get along without you two. You're grounding us. Is that it, Clyde? That's it, Gino. I, I'm sorry, but after all, the welfare of my performers is my responsibility. And it's your responsibility to see that a couple of broken-down acrobats don't thrill your regular customers with a fall that isn't part of the regular program, huh? I... Well, I, I wish you hadn't put it that way. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Clyde. That, that was a rotten thing for me to say. You've been swelled to us, and... Well, it's been wonderful working for you and with you. Well, maybe I haven't made myself clear. You're not leaving us. It... We don't take charity. Charity? What? Yes, uh... charity. Rita, that, that just isn't true. And don't kid yourself, Harriet. You and Clyde are show folks. You don't want to see a couple of thoroughbreds who wind up hitched to a milk wagon. So you are turning us out to pasture. Now, look, that's ridiculous. There are plenty of things around here that you can do, important things. What? Ride a couple of tired camels in the opening spectacle? <laughs> what a wind up before the flying police. Uh, listen, Clyde. Don't think we aren't grateful. We are. We've enjoyed every season with your circus, but the, it's time we made a change. Why, just the other day, I was telling Rita about uh, getting an offer from Williams. He he wants to give us top billing and, and a tour of the cotton. Oh, come off it, Gino. Williams' show is washed up. He canceled his tour in the middle of August. And as far as a tour to Europe, he'll be lucky to evade the sheriff. Well, there's plenty other spots for an act like the Flying Polito. Sure. Split season with a Carney in East Dubuque, a Grand Vaudeville tour, a one-night stand. In just a... a minute. We can always get time in good time, too. Gino, listen. I'm your friend. Your act's through, and you know it. Clyde... We need four more years of top billing or top salary. The only way we can get it is to continue our act. But if it's money you need, if you're in some sort of a jam, we I... We're not in a jam. We've just got something to take care of. We'll, we'll manage somehow. Then you won't stay on with us. I've explained, Harriet. We cannot. Now, Rita, I, I think we should consider Betty's offer. 
After all... We, we will manage, Gino. There is always a spot for an act like ours. Well, I, I can't make you stay. But don't forget, your contract with me doesn't terminate till the end of the tour, and I insist that you stay on that lawn. We'll work out our contract, Clyde. It calls for a high trapeze act. And that's what you'll get till this circus tour is over. <laughs> Looks like we didn't accomplish too much for the Politos. Mm, they're proud people. and mm -hmm. Well, I think I'd have done just what they did. Mr. Beatty, Mrs. Beatty, may I speak with you a moment? Was that you, Tina? Y yes, sir. I just had to talk to you. You see, my dressing tent is right next to Mr. and Mrs. Polito, and well, I couldn't help hearing your conversation. Matter of fact, you should have been included in the conference. After all, you are part of the act. Well, that's what I wanted to talk with you about, you see. I'm frightened, too, Mr. Beatty. Well, then you agree with me, Tina. It is dangerous to let the Politos go on. Oh, yes. Oh, it isn't for myself, because I, I can handle my part of the act all right, but, well, it's Reed and Gino. Their timing is off, way off. I wanted to tell you before, but... You felt I... sorry for them. Is that it, dear? Yes. And, well, I was afraid you might think I wasn't satisfied with my part in the act. And... Why, you're the I... best part of the act, Tina. As soon as I can get you a partner, I'll see that you replace the flying Polito. Oh, thank you, Mr. Beatty. But, truly, that isn't why I came to see you. I... I wanted to tell you that I know why they won't give up their act. Oh? Well, why, Tina? Well, it's their son. Their son? Mm -hmm. Harriet, did you know they had a son? I know. I'm as surprised as you are. Well, they have one, and he's the reason they keep on working. Well, I don't quite understand. What... All their money goes to put him through school. I see. He's never worked in his life. Always had the best, the finest school, summer camps, prep school, and now it's a university. Well, I guess it's their business if they want to spend their money on a son's education. Yes, but he's living like a prince. Well, they work so hard. Still, my dear, it is Rita's and Gino's business. Well, I suppose you're right, but oh, it makes me so darn good and mad. Well, I, I, I'd like to give that high and mighty young man a good talking to. I'd tell him. I'd ask him why he doesn't work his way through school like plenty of other boys do. And why he... <laughs> Take it easy, Tina. My goodness, you're getting that pretty little face of yours all stormed up. But it's true. And when we get to Chicago next week, I'm going to tell him so right to his face. Oh, does he live in Chicago, Tina? Oh, he goes to school there, the, the University of Chicago. Well, it's a fine school. Yes, and I understand that the men's dormitories at the university are very fine. But not fine enough for his lordship. Oh, no. He must have his own apartment. Well, Tina, I still say none of that's our business. Clyde's right, honey. I don't think it would be prudent for you to interfere. Well, I suppose it isn't my place to, but... Gee, what I'd give just to tell him what his folks are going through, just for him. You know, Harriet, I'm half inclined to agree with Tina. Well, so am I, but, well, it, it just isn't any of our business. I think it is. A couple of friends of mine are endangering their lives twice a day in my circus. When we get to Chicago, I think I'll have a talk with a certain young man who's important enough to make them do it. <laughs> Isn't this campus perfectly beautiful? It sure is. This part's called the Midway. That large building's the International House. Students from all over the world live there. Oh, gosh, what a place to go to school. That's what you should be doing, young woman, instead of working with a circus. Hmm. Don't think I wouldn't like to. <clears throat> uh, see that uh, chapel over there? It's the Rockefeller Memorial. It has the largest carolin bells in the world in its tower. Oh, listen. The bells are playing. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Well, here we are. Now, uh, you girls wait in the cab, and I'll go see if his lordship is in. It's a pretty fancy joint for a schoolboy to be living in. Why, Mr. Beatty, don't you know? Nothing is too good for an acrobat, son. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. Uh, can I assist you, sir? What, uh... Yes. Would you ring Mr. Polito's room, please? Uh, Polito? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We have no one by that name. Well, you must have. His name is Gene Polito, Jr. He... Well, we, uh, we have a Gene Paul, Jr. Are you sure you have the name correctly? Well, of course. His name is... Hey, wait. Did you say Gene Paul, Jr.? Uh, that's right. Maybe I did have the name wrong. Uh... Would you ring Mr. Paul, please? Oh, he's not in, sir. Well, when do you expect him? Well, not for several hours. He's over at the gymnasium, Bartlett Gymnasium, across the campus. Oh, is he on the basketball team or something? Oh, no. Mr. Paul is a gymnast, and a very good one, too, sir. A gymnast? Of course. Thanks. So, 
You can take the boy out of the circus, but he still has the circus in his blood. Hey, hey, fella, can you tell me if Gene Paul's around? Yeah, it's him on the giant bar. Oh, thanks. You mean that fella? Yeah, pretty good, isn't he? Well, that's putting it mildly. Well, he's excellent. Big Ten champ on the bar, the parallel bars and the rings. Well, that's great. Hey, hey, you look familiar. You an old grad? <laughs> no, son. I went to school with iron bars around it. Iron bars? You mean you went to a reform... Oh, wait, I get it. You, you, you're you Clyde Beatty, aren't you? That's right. Gee, Mr. Beatty, my name's Homer Cranchfield. I'm a, I'm a freshman at... Well, well, gee, I'm sure glad to know you. Well, I'm glad to know you, too. Say, would you do me a favor and ask Gene Paul to step over here for a minute? Sure, sure. Hey, Gene, come down off there. Somebody wants to see you. Somebody important. Be careful how you address an upperclassman. Oh, nuts. Clyde Beatty's over there. He wants to talk with you. Beatty? Did you say Beatty? Yeah, he probably wants to sign you up for his circus. You, uh, wanted to see me, sir? I wanted to see Gene Polito, Jr., but you'll do, I think. Well, I gotta go. I'll see you at the circus, Mr. Beatty. <laughs> so long, Homer. His name is Homer, isn't it? <laughs> that freshman's quite a character, isn't he, Polito? My name is Paul. Gene Paul. Oh, oh, I see. Well, it could be a coincidence, but there's a marked resemblance between you and a couple of swell people I know. Their name is Polito, and they're acrobats in my circus. Look here, just what is it you want? Just, uh, interested in seeing how the other half lives. You're way out of line, Mr. Beatty. I know I am. I can see now that I've stuck my nose in where it doesn't belong. You certainly have. But as long as I've made myself look this bad, I might as well get a little satisfaction out of it. You are Rita and Gino Polito's son, aren't you? I can't see how that could possibly concern you. I'm making it my concern. If you'll excuse me, I'll go take my shot. Now, wait. Look, I don't like the position I've got myself into. That's your problem. Okay, Mr. Stuffed Shirt. Listen to this. If I've made a mistake, if you're not Gene Polito... Then all I've done is make a fool of myself. That's obvious. I'd rather feel like a fool than feel that I'd taken somebody's life. What? What do you mean? You don't have to throw a knife or pull a trigger to be instrumental in someone's death. What are you talking about? Sometimes you can be so stupid you don't realize you're in any way responsible. For heaven's sakes, what are you trying to say? You don't even have to care. But let me tell you this. If you are Gene Polito and your father and mother fall from the high trapeze, you're going to feel like a murderer. <laughs> And now, back to Clyde Beatty's adventure, The Flying Politos. Clyde realizes that Gino and Rita Polito are risking their lives each time they perform their high trapeze act. But when Clyde visited their son at the university, he was reluctant to even discuss his parents. Now it's performance time again, and Clyde and Harriet are anxiously watching the figures on the high trapeze. No, the Polito said if I was going to hold them to their contract, they were going to finish out the tour with the act that it stipulates. Did you tell them they'd get the same salary for doing a safer act? Yes, and they were insulted. Oh, dear, I'm almost afraid to look up there. You and me both. Mr. Beatty, could I speak with you a moment? You? Yes. I came to say how sorry I am for my actions yesterday. I... Well, I was wrong, sir. I'm afraid I was a bit rough on you, too. Oh, Harriet, I want you to meet Gene Paul. My name is Polito. Gene Polito, Jr. I'm very happy to meet you, Gene. You must be Mrs. Beatty. That's right. My, I had no idea Rita and Gino had such a handsome son. Hey, now take it easy, Harriet. You're scaring this young fellow to death. <laughs> I don't scare that easy, Mr. Beatty. Great Scott, Rita almost fell off the pedestal. You grabbed her just in time. Oh, that scares me. I see what you mean, Mr. Beatty. Oh, I had no idea of this, but Mother and Dad have no business doing an act like that. I've tried to make them quit. They won't listen to me. Maybe they'll listen to me. Thank goodness the act is over. Yeah, they'll be down here in a minute. Mr. Beatty, I don't think you got a very good impression of me yesterday. To be perfectly honest, I thought you were kind of stuffy. <laughs> you were right. I've been taking things for granted. I didn't realize what Mother and Dad were doing for me. Oh, here they come. I'll bet they'll be happy to see you, Gene. I'm not so sure. Oh, Rita. Gino, come over here, will you? 
kind that gave the customers a thrill, huh? <laughs> Gee, what are you doing here? Mother, look, it's Gee. Yes, I know. I saw him from up there. That's why I almost slipped off the pedestal. Hello, Mother. Hello, Dad. Hi, son. Glad to see you. Well, I'm not. You agreed you never come to the circus. Why have you disobeyed me? But, Mother, I... Never mind. We will discuss it later. I've got to change now. Well, your mother's upset. I guess it's because she's surprised to see you here. It's all right, Dad. I suppose I shouldn't have come during your performance. You better go change. I'll wait around here for you. See you later, son. Looks like I've sort of started something. It's all right, Mr. Beatty. I, I'm glad you did. Hi, everybody. Oh, Tina, come here. I'd like you to meet someone. Sure. Miss Tina Posh, Mr. Gene Polito. And don't forget the junior. Uh, skip the junior, please. How do you do, Mr. Polito? Oh, kind of chilly in here, isn't it, Mrs. Beatty? Well, Yes, I... it is. And if you'll excuse me, I'll get out of this flimsy costume. Well, no matter how you look at it, Mr. Beatty... It appears I'm persona non grata around here. <laughs> it appears so, Junior. It certainly does. More coffee, dear? No. How about you, son? Yes, please. Now, Jean, why did you break your promise to me? I was worried about you and Dad. Worried? Why should you suddenly become worried about us? It was something Mr. Beatty said to me when he came out to school yesterday. Oh. Oh, so Mr. Beatty's been sticking his nose into our business again. Uh, but, Mother... Never mind. Listen to me. Your father and I have been in this business a long, long time. We know what we're doing. Mother, you don't understand. I understand only one thing. You're never going to have anything to do with the circus. You are going to have the best education you can get. But... Don't interrupt. Your father and I have seen to it that you have the best of everything. The least you can do is carry out our wishes. Now, Mother, I don't think you've been quite fair. Jean was worried about it. I will do the worrying for this family. And I say, my son is not going to lead the life we've led. It hasn't been such a bad life, Rita. Huh. Uh, on the road nine months of the year, sleeping on stuffy trains, dressing in drafty tents, no real home, living out of a trunk. Do you call that a good life? Why do you do it, Mother? Because I want you to have the things that we don't. Don't you think I should have something to say about that? You'll have nothing to say about it. You'll do what I want you to do. You'll stay away from the circus. You'll study and you'll work. You'll make something of yourself. I won't have you in show business. I won't. I won't. I won't. Miss Foch. Oh, Miss Foch. Yes? Uh, oh, it's you... Yes, it's me. I don't think we have anything to say to one another. I think we do. Then you'll be talking to yourself because I have nothing to say to you. Miss Foch, help me. Why should I want to help you? Because you admire my mother and dad. Well, at least that's true. Look, I've never been around a circus. I, I know nothing about show business. The few weeks out of the year the folks have spent with me, they'd never allow the subject to be brought up. Yesterday, I, I saw my mother very nearly slip off a platform 50 feet in the air. It... It frightened me. It frightened me and, and Mr. and Mrs. Beatty. So what? They mustn't be allowed to do that act anymore. Then you couldn't go to the university anymore. You'd have to give up your fancy apartment. Maybe, heaven forbid, your highness would have to go to work. I have a very strong back, Miss Foch. Wait. You're, you're serious about this, aren't you? Yes. Don't you want to finish school? I mean, go on to be a doctor or a lawyer or something? If I can. Well, but if your father and mother stop working, why... Miss Foch... Would you mind feeling my arm? Your arm? What? Oh, muscles. Oh, I see what you mean. I told you. I have a very strong back. What's going on here? A conspiracy? Now, take it easy, Rita. The nerve of that little, little... Mother, please. Oh, don't bother me. By what right does that Foch girl speak to me about matters that concern our son? Look, nobody's concerned about our son. Oh, no? They're certainly putting on a good act, then. Don't you see, Rita? See? See what? It's us they're all worried about. Uh, and Lala thanked them to mind their own business. They think we threw. And, honey, I think they're right. What? You too? Let's face it. They act slipping. If it weren't for that pretty little Tina Foch up there with us, we'd lay an egg. The only thing thrilling about the flying Politos is uh, some night our timing will be worse than usual. And... That's our cue we're on. Right. Let's go. But, Rita, this is our last performance. What? You heard me? This is our last performance. Now, come along. Hurry. We miss our cue. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Beatty. 
lady. I hope you don't mind my coming back here like this. Well, not at all. Matter of fact, I'm glad you're here. Just before they went on, your dad told me this is to be the last performance for the Flying Politos. Oh, that's a relief. What did Mother have to say about that? Well, not very much. Your dad's always been such a mild-tempered sort of man, but this time he's the boss. <laughs> Good for Dad. <laughs> oh, the act started. I'll be glad when it's finished. Oh, look at little Tina out there. Isn't she a picture? She's a picture any place. Uh-huh. I knew there must be something beside the animals that attracted you to the circus. <laughs> Why, Mr. Beatty, didn't you know that Miss Foch hates me like poison? Love, hate. I didn't go to a university, my boy, but I learned a long time ago how close those two emotions are. Quiet, look. Something's wrong up there. Well, Rita, Mr. Timing, the trapeze is swinging wild. She's in trouble. Her foot's caught in the guide rope. What's Dad trying to do? He's building up momentum, trying to reach her from his trapeze. He's swinging crazy. He can't reach her. If he leans any farther, he'll fall. Gino, Gino, don't try to reach her. We'll get somebody up there. Buck, George, lower Mrs. Polito's trapeze. Oh, Clyde, they can't. The ropes are tangled. The poison are jammed. Uh, l- let me buy Mrs. Beatty. Gene, where are you going? Up after my mother. Look at that boy climb that rope. The descent line is caught on the edge of the trapeze bar. If it doesn't slip off, you'll reach her. Man, I've never seen anybody go up a rope that fast. Oh, if only that rope doesn't slip. Rita's hanging head down. He'll reach her in a second. Watch it. Easy. There, he made it. He made it. Well, I've checked over the last of the contracts, honey. Oh, where's the winter gone? It doesn't seem possible at circus time again. Oh, w- would you see who that is, please, Harriet? Mm-hmm. Rita, Gino, well, how wonderful. Well, come in. Well, the Politos, glad to see you. Hello, Harriet and Clyde. Well, Clyde, you look like you're pretty busy. Well, you know how it is at this time of the year, contracts, rehearsal schedules... Brutes and all those dull details. Uh, speaking of contracts, you got one there for the Flying Politos? What? Huh? What do you mean? Now, look here, Clyde. You don't think you can send this circus on the road without the Flying Politos? Oh, of course you can. After all, how many years has the act been on the bill? But, but I, I didn't think that... You could... didn't think you could do without an act like the Flying Politos, did you? Well, I... <laughs> this is kind of a surprise. I, I thought the act was over. Finished. The Politos? Oh, no. As long as there is a circus, there will be flying politos. Well, now listen, friends. I thought we had this thing all settled last the fall. Don't we... go getting all worked up, uh, Clyde. Come on out in the practice arena for a minute. Okay, but if you think I'm going to let you two do a high-flying act again, you're wrong. Hold your horses. Who said anything about us? But you said that the flying politos. Sure I did. Here, take a look up there. Uh, Clyde. Clyde, you see what I see? And how? Brother, look, are they good. Okay. Now, how about that contract? Same billing, same money as before. Now, wait a minute. Oh, you're not going to stop a young man working this summer to earn his way through the university, are you? No. I just wanted to know how you wanted the billing. Oh. Print it like this, Clyde. Tina and Jean, the Flying Politos. <laughs> Clyde Beatty will return in just a moment. Here again is Clyde Beatty. The Politos are a great family. Like all circus performers, they exemplify the sense of loyalty that's a part of circus life. I'll have another story of danger and excitement to tell you when next we meet. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. The Flying Politos was written by R.T. Smith and Frank Hart Clausen. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production.